All right, Homestead know how life is good. As you can see, the pigs are hungry. So we're doing about nine gallons of feed a day per four pigs. We've got them a good mud hole going. I've got to fix the shake off. It fell or it's been torn down by the wind or by them. These guys are growing over here. They've got a... These guys were little. They were about the size of a chihuahua, now about the size of a medium dog. Got them a water uh, mud hole going there. Got the goats out getting some fresh green. We've already watered the ducks and chickens and fed them. So, uh, look, they want their food. So we're gonna give them some food here. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a 16% grower mixed with some corn. I do not do the corn every feeding. Probably maybe two, two, three times a week. Maybe a couple scoops. All right, so that's what they're getting. So we're gonna try to do this. One-handed, we're gonna try to dump this feed one-handed. All right, here we go. All right, and look. Instant silence, it's amazing. Like kids, when food's in their mouth, they don't talk. Heck, when food's in my mouth, I don't talk either. I'm ready to eat. All right, so there's that. And then we'll dump this seven and a half, or seven, seven and a half. I keep saying seven and a half. Seven, uh, seven gallons of feed in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that one-handed. So what I'm going to do, I'll set it right there. And then we're going to put... Some hay over there. We put new water in for the goats. And we've got some tomatoes off our tomato plants today. Took a head of cabbage over to our neighbor from the garden. He didn't put it out this year, but he always likes cabbage. But he's getting up in age uh, where he, he's not able to do that. So. We had to, had the boys take him some lettuce over there. So what I've done, I want to show this too. I bought another 100 foot never kink made in the USA hose. And I basically ran it down. I was going to get the hard popping and pop it all in. Uh, but honestly, I mean, PVC and PEX is going to break down over the year anyways. I don't know how long it would last, but I can usually get a good couple of years out of these Never Kink hoses, and I can utilize them other places if I want to. My original intent, I was going to run hard pop all the way down to the corner at the chicken pen. That way I could just plug the hose into it right there, drag it maybe 35, 40 feet, plug it in, and then I was going to put three valves, one for the goats, one for the first set of pigs, one for the second set of pigs, and I guess I was going to do four because I'm still supposed to put a pig pen right here. That way I could just turn those valves on, fill up water barrels, fill up mud pits right here at it, and I have to worry about dragging the hose. But all I did, run this hose to the end. I can plug it in to fill this one, and I'm already most of the way there for the, the big pigs, so I can fill those up as well. Um, so it just saves a little bit of time and effort on getting that filled. Now it's hard to tell how big these guys are, but I'm going to squat down right here. And if you can imagine, that's about eight inches in between each rung there. And there's, so one, two, three, four. All right, so four eighths is 32. So, I mean, that tells you kind of how big they are. And if you look right there, well, if you'd stand, here's one, two, three, maybe four so they're about the same long as they are high maybe maybe a little difference but they're they're getting up there in size and a lot of times what people don't realize you know when you're looking at a hog and talking about size and weight you know most people just think big and fat you know fat and round and everything but what people forget is the length from you know say behind the neck to the back of the rear end there you know, if you get a good long hog, he might not be as big around, but he's going to surprise you when it comes to weighing, or she, whichever, is going to surprise you when it comes to laying, uh, laying, 
when it comes to um, processing because there's gonna be a lot of weight in that length so keep that in mind and also over here these I always get this mixed up so if I'm wrong you can correct me in the comments but they were I want to say Yorkshire Landshire mix at least that's what we were told whichever it is if you notice that one right let's see where'd he go uh, this one right here I think well they're dirty now I can't tell might actually be this one but you it's kind of hard to tell because the mud but there's some dark coloration from the front and then a space in the back so that's typically Hampshire or uh, one of the darker breeds and I, I always get those mixed up Yorkshire Hampshire it's one of the two but anyway one's pink and one's got the bluish color it's this one right here you can see it now see the dark a little bit darker here lighter color darker in the back some of them it looks like they got it but a lot of that's mud <clears throat> but you can see he's got some pretty good length but these are growing good anyway so that's supposed to be one of the better qualities as far as flavor and taste in the meat um i've had both i couldn't really tell a huge difference some people say they can all right so we're going to try to get these guys to about 350 400 pounds and then they'll go in to be processed and i've got four of these sold Two of those down there will be leaving soon. They're buying them as they are now. And they're going to raise them themselves. Uh, we put this in for, for them to get cool, but they'll also drink out of it. And we keep we do this daily. It don't set here for more than a day. Uh, and then we refill it so water runs out. It gets mixed up. It's not like it's stagnant. Um, looks like a frog might be enjoying it. Did you see it move there? That was pretty interesting. So anyways, um, we make sure we, you know, it's not stagnant water. We're going to put some more fly traps up. I'm sure you can see the flies. We try to do our best to keep the flies off of them. And of course, that's why we have the mud pit, because they obey the mud, and it'll get rid of flies. So, uh, water barrels, you can see the water where it comes out, they would root down a little bit. That's another reason we do this, to keep them from rooting down at the water barrels. And I think over here we got an escaped one of our hens has come out. It's amazing. Sometimes they come out and they can't figure out how to get back in. So we're going to see if we can help her out in her. They can be tricky, especially one-handed. There we go. Just grab her by her leg, upside down. She'll calm down. All right, now all I'm going to do... There you go, girl. There she is. There she corrected it. Look here. Here's an apple that's fallen from this apple tree. So what I like to do with these, just kind of do like that. That way, bust it open. Let me throw it over there. They'll find it and eat it if they like. All right. So with that being said, here's our rooster's ducks sky and the old mud puddle look there's a I guess a ball hmm. maybe one of the kids threw that in there I don't know all right guys so that's what we're gonna do for the day homestead know-how like share subscribe hit that notification bell hope you have a blessed day